Lux presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Barbara Stanwyck and George Brent in My Reputation. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. A few years ago, when I was in India, I was reminded that primitive societies solved the question of what to do with a widow by simply burning her on the funeral pyre beside her husband. Uh, tonight's play from Warner Brothers' recent screen success, My Reputation, shows that today that problem isn't solved so easily, uh, fortunately for the widow. It dramatizes the modern version of the widow who tries to remake her life in the face of critical convention. Our stars are from the original cast, Barbara Stanwyck and George Brent. Barbara making her first radio appearance since returning from three months in Europe. Knowing from personal experience how scarce soap is overseas, I asked Barbara how she ever got along without Lux Flakes. Well, Bill, she said I didn't. I had several packages in my wardrobe trunk and guarded them as carefully as our passports. Well, I'm sure that's no surprise to the ladies in our audience who have done much traveling. You know from your own experience how helpful Lux Flakes are in keeping nice things fresh and clean in crowded quarters. Here's the curtain for Act One of My Reputation, starring Barbara Stanwyck as Jessica Drummond and George Brent as Major Landis. In the late summer of 1944, following a long illness, Paul Drummond died. A comparatively young man, well-to-do, with a lovely wife and two fine boys, Paul Drummond had everything to live for. It's a couple of days after the funeral now, and in a charming home in Lake Forest, Illinois, the widow, Jessica Drummond, is visited by her mother. Come in, Mother. Sorry I'm not dressed. Really, Jessica? Ten o'clock in the morning and still in a dressing gown. Well, Frank dropped by unexpectedly. And I'm... you... you saw Frank dressed like this? It was important, Mother. Something about Paul's it will. It doesn't matter if Frank is your lawyer. Making an appearance in a dressing gown is hard Come to... upstairs, dear. I'll change now. I brought you some more black stockings, Jessica, and a morning veil. You'll need several, but I... Well, what's the matter? The dust on this banister. Oh, really, Mother? When has Anna had time to think about dusting? Oh, Grandma. Keith, my dear. And where's Kim? Here I am, Grandma. Good morning, dear. We're going to have to have some money, Mom. Well, ask Anna. Run along now, boys. Where are you going? To the ball game. The White Sox are playing the ball creek. Ball game? Really, boys? I think you'd be ashamed. Mother, please don't. Wait. It's okay, Mom. Grandma's right. We shouldn't have even asked. Oh, come on, Kim. Let's go feed the dog. Allowing your sons to go to a baseball game the very week they're poor They father. love baseball, Mother. They always went with Paul. Besides, they're leaving for school in a few I days. I fail to see what school has to do with baseball game. What are you doing? We're getting dressed. Well, where's your black dress? I'm not going to wear black, Mother. Not wear black. My dear child, you're a widow. That doesn't mean having to wear black. To our kind of people... It means exactly that. Don't insist on it, Mother. I know you've always worn it. I suppose you like it. Like it? Have you no respect for the memory of your father? It has been 20 years. I shall wear mourning till the day I die. Don't understand you at all. Getting into whims. All right, call it a whim. A psychologist would call it a phobia because that's just what it is. I've learned to loathe black. The very thought of mourning stifles me. It's right for you, perhaps, but it isn't for me. Now, please, let's not discuss it, Mother. Very well, Jessica. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to blow up. You're going to stay for lunch, aren't you? I think not. Getting angry over such a small thing. Obviously, I'm a disturbing influence. Naturally, I expect you and the boys to dinner tonight. Yes, Mother, we'll be there. Wait a second. Oh, hello, George. You come right over here and let me have a good look at you. I just saw Riette in the market. That's right. Bring my wife into the conversation. 
Hey, you're a sight for sore eyes now. <laughs> yes, I'm a sight, all right. Trying to market these days. Now, how I... about stopping by for a drink tonight? Oh, I can't tonight. I promised the boys I would take them on a picnic. It would break their hearts if I called it off, and by the time we get back... It would... Well, if you'll let go of my hand, George, I, I have to run, really. Sure. You call us real soon, huh? Yes, I will. Mom, what are we having for our picnic? Yes, bologna and cold ham. Oh, boy, I could eat a bear. Where did you say Keith went? Just over to Gretchen. Oh, I saw her mother and dad at the market. Well, don't worry. Keith will be back, all right. He wouldn't miss this picnic for anything. Mrs. Drummond! Mrs. Drummond! Well, that's Gretchen now, isn't it? We're in here, Gretch. Where's Keith? What Where do you think? Hiya, Mom. Hello, dear. Gretchen, how about joining us for the picnic? Well, well, that's what I wanted to ask you about, Mrs. Drummond. Oh, hello, Kim. Hi. You see, I've got a house guest, Mrs. Drummond, and she's terribly cute, and we're all going to have supper at the country club. And, well, I was wondering, couldn't Keith and Kim join us? Oh, please, Mrs. Drummond. Well, uh, of course, if they'd like. But we're having a picnic with Mother. And that's what I told her, Oh, Mom. nonsense. Run along. Well, after all, Keith and Kim are going away to school, and, and I thought it'd be simply super... Well, what do you do, Mom? All alone here. Well, I'll, uh... I'll go to a movie. Oh, gee, thanks, Mrs. Drummond. Goodbye. Come on, kids, let's go. Bye, Mom. Thanks, Mom. We won't be home late. Hey, what time is it? Oh, it's about 10 o'clock, I guess. Guess Mom isn't home yet. Who says I'm not home? Hey, didn't you go to the show? Oh, I was too tired. Well, did you have fun? I'll say. The whole gang was there, Mom. But if we'd known you were staying oh, home... Oh, it's all right, dear. I'm glad you had a chance to see all your old friends. Two more days and you're off for school. Just two more days. You're not sorry to be leaving uh, them, are you? Oh, sorry. Well, because you can still go to school here if you'd rather. Oh, I'm glad we're going to Dad's old school. Mother, what's the matter? Oh, nothing, dear. You'll write to me once a week at least. Oh, I sure, Mom. Gosh, you, you won't be lonely. Oh, no, I'll get along fine. After all, Anna's here and Grandma and I... Oh, look, it's late. We still have two whole days to worry about what I'll do when you're gone. Off to bed now. Bye. Come on, Mom. Well, there they go, Jessica. Massachusetts seems an awfully long way from home for two boys so young. Oh, Mother, please don't start sentimentalizing. Can't a person say anything to you these days? Jessica, I'd like to talk with you. I can't now. I'm meeting Jen at the Blackmore. But it's important. What is it, Mother? Now, you needn't sigh. It's a thought for your future. When did you see Frank last? That morning he came over about the will. Why? Before I go south for the winter, and since you refuse to go with me, I want to know that my child's future is assured. And I think that, next to Paul, Frank is by far the best man for you. Oh, no, really, Mother. I have a feeling that Frank would like nothing better. And what I think apparently makes no difference. Well, may I remind you that at your age, you can't be too particular. I don't want to discuss it now. I mean it. We'll continue the discussion in the car. My chauffeur can drop you off at the Blackmore. Oh, I'd rather walk. It's such a lovely day. Honestly, I... Jessica, there are times when I could just shake you. Of all the stuff... Stubborn... All right, Mother, all right. I'll ride here. Tell me, Jessica, what about the boys? Get them off all right? Oh, they're gone, Jenna. Isn't it awful the way things happen between parents and children? You bring them into the world, they depend upon you for everything, but so soon the changes. They pull away and you have to sit tight and let them. If you don't, it ends up like my mother and me. Another battle? Oh, I've been terrible to her lately. Oh, look who's at the bar. Phyllis with another man. I haven't seen Phyllis since she got back from Reno. Women on the loose. Oh, Jenna, they can be such a mess. How do I know I won't be like Phyllis in a year or so? Oh, sure. Ever since I was 17, Paul has been my entire life. Before Paul, it was mother, and recently it's been the boys. Now, what do I do when I have to start out from scratch? I'm scared, Jenna. I'm scared to death. Well, look who's here. Oh, hello, George. Hello. Riet with you? All on my own, Jenna. Say, you need a man to liven up the party here. <laughs> I don't want to disappoint you, but I'm leaving in a few minutes. Disappoint me? Well, that's terrific. I'll drive you home. <laughs> you know what your wife says about your driving. Oh, take him up, Jess. Anything's better than that train ride to Lake Forest. Even George. Isn't she sweet, huh? <laughs> well, I think we have time for another round, haven't we? Oh, waiter. Waiter. Hey, 
see? Safely home, Jess. No bones broken. Thanks a lot, George. Oh, don't go in yet. You, uh, gonna be in later this evening? Why, yes, I suppose so. I'll have dinner at home, but I... I can tell her yet I have to go somewhere on business. Oh, now, wait a minute. I've always been crazy about you, Jess. Well, don't be silly, George. Oh, you must be tired after all. Oh, come on. Grow up. You're a big girl Let now. me go. George, I mean What's it. What's the I... matter with you? Hasn't another man ever kissed you before? Well, I didn't mean to upset you, Jess. No hard feelings. Hello. Hello, Ginna. This is Jess. Jess! Ginna, can I come over and see you? I, I mean, right away. Now I've got to. Well, of course, dear. I just can't stand it here alone. Thanks, Ginna. I'll give you a coat, Jess, and sit down. I made some tea. Oh, Ginna, what's the matter with me? What am I going to do? I seem to be going to pieces. Darling, what is it? I've tried. You know I have. You know, the house is closing down on me. That empty room, everything's closing down on me. Mother and having the boys gone, and I... What's the matter with me? I can't seem to stop this crying. Here, Jeff, here, have some tea. Oh, it's awful to come here like this. I'm so sorry. Stop saying that. And if you don't get out of that house and away from your mother, you'll end up in a sanatorium. I've never been like this in my whole it life. It just makes me sick the way you've let everyone manage your life. You've got to start being yourself for a change. Your life's oh, not Jenny, finished. Oh, Jenny, if I could... Listen to me. Carrie and I are going to Los Angeles on business, and you're going with us. After the business is over, we're taking a cabin at Lake Tahoe. There'll be snow by then. It'll do us all good skiing. Well, if and... I go anywhere, I should go south with Mother. All right, go south with your mother. I'm the one who has to face her, not you. Well, I'm glad to see you can stick up for yourself. Oh, I didn't mean to yell at you, darling. Please come with us, Jess. We could have such fun. Oh. All right, Jen, I'll go. Good. Now, let's put you to bed before you change your mind. <laughs> Lake Tahoe. Snow, skiing. Oh, why I ever came out here, I... Hey! Hey, you! Hey, you! You calling me? Yes, I, I've had an accident. What's the matter? Well, this. I, I guess I broke one of my skis. Ah, I see what you mean. Anyone who could do that to a ski hasn't any business wandering alone in these woods. I know. I, I'm sorry to bother you. Well, what can I do oh, for Oh, it's you? awfully stupid of me, but I've been going around in circles no, for such no, a long time. Just and I... a second. One thing at a time. Oh, uh, yes. Well, I'm staying at the Abbott cabin, and I know it must be somewhere around here, but uh, I can't seem slow to... Slow down now. Slow down. Now, to begin with, you're staying at the Abbott cabin. Uh, yes. All right. Now, take a look down there through those trees. No, no, no. Way over to the right. Oh, well, that's it. Good. Oh. Well, now, that's lesson number one. Lesson number two is how to get there. Oh, I can get there, and I'm terribly sorry to have interrupted your scheme. And I'm afraid you're going to interrupt it still more. Why? Because it's two miles to that cabin, and in a half an hour it's going to be dark, and you'll be wandering around in circles. I'm perfectly able to go straight down through those trees. Really? Well, you appointed me your guardian, and I intend to see you safely inside that cabin. Now, take off that other ski. You can ride on the back of mine. Oh, no, I can't. I'm just learning. I'll upset your balance. Well, let me worry about that. Now, hurry up. Well... There, it's off. Now, stand in my skis and hold on to me. No, 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 don't just grab my jacket. Put your arms around me. Well, go ahead. Like this? Yeah, sure. Now, relax and let me do the thinking for the next few minutes. You all set? Yes, I, I think so. All right, we're off. It's such a steep hill, isn't it? What? Do we have to go so fast? Well, hey, you want to get there, don't you? Oh, yes, very much. Well, then stop complaining. Ah! Oh! Yeah. Oh! Yeah. Well. Oh. Oh, I, I am sorry. I guess we fell my cap blew off and... Yeah, well, I... le lesson number three. When it's a question of risking a broken leg or losing a cap, forget the cap. Oh. Now, look at that ski. Now, I know it's going to be dark before we reach that cabin. Well, come on. Don't just sit there. <laughs> Carrie, close the door. Darling, I've been frantic. We had a slight accident. Oh, oh you haven't met. I'm sorry. I... Oh, 
I don't even know your name myself. Landis. Major Scott Landis. Hello, I'm Abbott. Glad to know you. And Mrs. Abbott. How do you do? Well, sit down. You look frozen. What do you say we all have a hot rum, huh? Thanks, I will. You uh, stationed around here, Major Landis? No, I have a ten days leave, so I thought I'd catch up on my skiing. Oh, my winter sports are intimately tied up with hot rum. Oh, excuse me, I'll go help Jenna. Now, just for the record, what's your name? Jessica Drummond, but they usually call me Jeff. Oh, suddenly I seem to observe a wedding ring. Is your husband here with you? My husband passed away last summer. I'm sorry. Well, here they are. I hope they're good. Oh, thanks. Uh, grab one, Jess. Well, here's to your skiless but safe return. And to the St. Bernard who found her. I'm deeply touched. <laughs> now, stay put, everybody. I'll see you about something to eat. Well, look at the time. You mean to say that I've been talking ever since dinner? Oh, it's 10 o'clock. A few good people will excuse me. I'm going to bed. Always the tactful hostess, darling. Hey, uh, a little groggy myself. Oh, look out there. It's snowing again. Uh, where are you living, Major? Oh, not far. Only about 12 miles from here. Oh, you're not going to try to make it tonight, are you? Well, if you don't mind, I could bunk right here on the couch. Oh, I wish, wish you would. Well, see that he has some blankets, will you, Jess? Well, see you in the morning, Major. Good night, and thanks. You want some coffee, Jess? Oh, no, no. I'll be coming up in a minute myself. Sleepy, too? Well, I ought to be. I haven't had so much exercise in months. Did you good? I hate to think of leaving here in four days. Must you? I have responsibilities. I have two boys, Major, 12 and 14. Well, I suppose that's my cue to say you look too young to have boys 12 and 14. <laughs> you know, you have an odd way of catching people on everything. You expect stock phrases? No. No, I don't at all. You know, I've been watching you all evening, Jessica. Now confess it. You've been hermetically sealed most of your life, haven't you? Well, I suppose so in a way. Well, it's time to change. You're very self-sufficient, aren't you? <laughs> well, I never even gave it a thought. <laughs> you see, I've never had much of a chance to express myself. Why, even when I went to Europe, I went with Mother. Yes, and I... I know. And you stayed at the correct hotels and spoke French religiously while you were in Paris. Mm-hmm. I've seen hundreds of people like that all over the world, guidebook in hand, walking desperately <laughs> from cathedral to cathedral. Yes, I'm afraid you're right. You know, I like you very much. Must you sit so close to me, Major Landis? Why, I believe you're serious. Yes, I am. Oh, so you're going to rise to your feet and decide it's time to say good night, huh? Well, yes, it is time. Well, good night, then, Jessica. In case you're cold, Major Landis, cat. Huh? Oh, 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 blanket. <laughs> Hey, wait a minute. Good I night, want... then, Major Landis. In a moment, we'll bring you Act Two of My Reputation, starring Barbara Stanwyck and George Brent. Libby, I, I hear you went to Jack Carson's birthday party. Yes, it was right on the set of Warner Brothers' new musical, Love and Learn. Who was there? Oh, the whole cast. Bob Hutton and Martha Vickers and Janice Page and 300 extras. They'd been shooting a birthday celebration scene for Love and Learn, and when the shooting was over, the cake and the refreshments turned out to be a real party for Jack. Complete with presents, too? Oh, yes, of course. But the nicest thing about the party was that Jack gave presents to his guests. 300? Wow, what were they? Oh, nylon stockings for the girls. Nylons and no Lux flakes to go with them? Well, I guess Jack figured most of the girls would have Lux anyway. Martha and Janice said there'd been lots of talk about stocking care because the girls had been dancing for five days straight. That would be hard on stockings if, it, if they didn't get Lux every night. Well, girls who work in the studios soon discover that wardrobe departments depend on Lux to keep stockings lovely for a long time. I think you can rest assured that girls who care about their stockings will see to it their new nylons get Lux Care. Martha Vickers and Janice Page say they wouldn't be without Lux. Well, then that proves they're very smart girls, because Lux helps stockings to last twice as long, according to those strain tests we've talked about so often. Silk, nylon, rayon, and cotton all showed similar results. If girls could see how quickly stockings ran when they were rubbed with a strong soap and how much longer they lasted when they were washed with Lux... I'm sure they'd never risk strong soap again. Oh, goodness, no. When stockings last twice as long, why, that's just like getting an extra pair every time you buy a pair. A thrifty thought. 
That's why clever girls luck stockings after every single wearing. We'll return you now to William Keeley. Act two of My Reputation, starring Barbara Stanwyck as Jessica and George Brent as Scott Landis. Jessica Drummond's stay at Lake Tahoe is almost over. Attracted to Major Landis, but still quite uncertain just what to make of him, Jessica spent her last four days almost constantly in his company. It's late at night now, and they've just returned from a day's drive through the snow-covered countryside. Oh, this nice warm room. Me for that fire. But where are they, Carrie and Jenna? Getting to sleep, probably. I saw their light go off as we came up the road. Wasn't it a wonderful day? Why do people live in the city? I could stay here forever. Come here. Thanks for today, Scott. You've made a new woman out of me. I I feel like a kid. And you look like one. You're lovely, Jessica. I... Why did you do that? Why did you kiss me? We were getting along so well together. Because I thought it was a very fitting ending to a swell four days. I meant what I said. I don't think you did. Why? Can't you understand that I may not want to be kissed? Jessica, just what is your game? Does everyone have to have a game? Well, whatever's on your mind, I certainly don't know what it's all about. I'm afraid we don't understand each other, that's all. I guess we haven't from the beginning. You'd better go. Yes, I guess I'd better. Goodbye, Jessica. My best to the abbot. Thank you. Oh, uh, be sure and lock your door, Jessica. Drummond, you've been home now for two days, and in two days, why, you haven't eaten enough. Anna, to... please, I'm just not hungry. I surely thought that you'd eat something tonight. I'll answer it. Jessica, the door was open. Why, so Frank, I... how nice to see you. I was out this way, and I took a chance. Oh, um, some flowers. Oh, Frank. Anna, we've company for dinner. Oh, no, Jess, not dinner. Nonsense, you sit right down. I'll put these in water right after we eat. They're lovely. You're lovely, too. Hey, Mr. Everett, so glad you stopped by. Thanks. Well, it's certainly nice being fussed over. I'm so glad to see you. You look wonderful, Jess. I'm glad now you went with the Abbots. Didn't you want me to go? I wanted you to stay here so I could look after you. Oh, that's sweet of you, Frank. You've no idea how nice this is, sitting here with you. Oh, it's good to have you here. It's no secret how I feel about you, Jess. You and I know the same people. We like the same things. I think the boys like me, and I... Mrs. Drummond, Mrs. Abbott. I'm sorry, Frank. Oh, uh, say hello for me. What did you say, Jenna? You're where? In the Georgian room at the Blackmore, Carrie and I. And guess who's here? Major Landis. With you? No, he hasn't even seen us. He's with some other people. Why don't you get in the car and join us? Oh, I'd love to. Oh, no, I can't. Frank's here. Well, bring him along. Well, uh, maybe, Jenna. Look, if we're coming, we'll be there in an hour or so. Oh, I wish you would come. Well, I'll see. Thanks for calling, Jenna. Goodbye. Jenna and Carrie are night clubbing. Oh, how are they? They're fine. They, uh, suggested that we join them. Well, would you like to? Oh, if you'd like to, it might be fun. Why don't we? Well, you finish dinner then, and I'll hurry and change. Oh, but you look fine. Oh, this old thing? No, I want to look glamorous. Oh, but what about your dinner? I'm not hungry, Frank, honestly. Anna! Anna! Um, major development? <laughs> no, not yet, Jenna. Don't give up hope. I think we're being watched. Say, what are you two talking about anyway? Private monkey business, no doubt. It's simply that Jess has something on the fire, but it still isn't definite. Oh, well, that clears up everything. <laughs> Don't pay any attention to her, please. Well, what would you like to drink with dinner, Jess? Huh? Oh, did you say something, Hello. Frank? I... Hello. Oh, Landis, well, pull up a chair. Major Landis, I'd like you to meet Frank Everett. How do you do? Won't you join us for a drink? I wish I could, but I'm entertaining an old girlfriend. Oh? And her husband. Sounds a little complicated. Uh, by the way, if we hadn't parted so uh, hurriedly at Tahoe, I would have mentioned that I was going to be stationed here for a while. I, uh, I'd i like to give you a ring, Jessica. That would be very nice. Well, what about giving me your telephone number? It's in the book. Oh, well, thanks. It's uh, <clears throat> nice to have seen you all again, <laughs> Mr. Everett. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, sit down, boy. Uh... How about a little toast? Uh, here's to, uh, to, uh... Oh. Mm. 
I'll get it, Anna. I'm right here. I... Hello? Who? Oh. No, thank you. I already have a cookbook. Yes. Goodbye. Now, look, Mrs. Dunlan, why don't you let me sew for the Red Cross and you go over to the Hawks and play some bridge? Oh, the old crowd's no fun anymore. I feel dreadfully out of it. But you ought to go out more. It's just Answer a... it, Anna. But the way you've been hopping that phone every time... Well, I thought from... that maybe... No, it's never anything important. Yes, ma'am. Hello? Yes? Yes, I'll see. Uh, this time it's a Major Landis. Oh! Oh, oh, yes. Oh, Anna, would you run upstairs and see if you can find that blue thread? Uh, yes, ma'am. Hello. Well, how are you, Scott? Oh, I'm fine. Uh, what? Tomorrow night? The lakeside, 6 o'clock. Oh, yes, that would be fine. Y yes, I'll be there. Thanks for calling. That blue thread was right here in the sewing box, Mrs. Dunn. It was? Oh, that's funny. Well, what did he want? I'm having dinner with him tomorrow night. Hmm. Going someplace uh, fancy? I'm meeting him at his apartment. Uh, oh, uh, of course we'll go directly out somewhere. Well, what are you smirking about? Oh, just thinking what your mother would say. Well, you can stop thinking and hand me that blue thread. said fifth floor, didn't you, miss? Oh, yes, Major Landis. That's 503, miss, right across the corridor there, in front of you. Thank you. Elevator! Elevator! Why, Jessica, what a surprise! Oh, Miss, Mrs. Thompson, how are you? I've just been visiting the Jacksons. My, you look lovely. When does Mother return, dear? Well, I, I really don't know. I imagine... Jessica, that... well, right on time. Oh, hello. Ew. <laughs> Well, it, it's lovely seeing you again, Mrs. Thompson. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye, Jessica. Well, well, I must say. Who was the dragon out there? <laughs> Just a friend of Mother's. Oh, what a nice place you have. Except it isn't mine. A friend of mine loaned it to me while I'm being stationed here. Uh, quite a coincidence seeing you in the Georgian room. Uh, yes. You know, I rather like that Frank Everett. Seems like a nice guy. Oh, he's not only a nice guy, he's, he's a... a gent. I can't imagine you having anything in common with him. Oh. Oh, I don't mean it that way. I mean, um... You, um... you know, <laughs> you're what my mother would have called a caution. How is that? <laughs> anyway, if you hadn't been poured into that icy mold of conventionality, you'd be a good egg, you know. You're going to hatch one of these days. Am I? <laughs> well, uh, let's sit on the couch, shall we? Well, come on, it's not a booby trap. Well, <laughs> I... I thought perhaps it was. There. Now, tell me, what did you do today? Well, I, I went to the Red Cross, and then I did my shopping, and I had lunch with some friends. And what did you have for lunch? <laughs> Consomme and chef salad. No dessert? No, I never eat dessert. Uh -huh. uh, that's a martini in front of you. Well, if you'd, uh, if you'd let me have my hand, I... Oh, oh well, I... Uh, let me hand it to you. <clears throat> Here. Thank you. <coughs> oh, I must make a note of this. Never waste pre-war gin on Mrs. Drummond. Now, let's see, where were we? Oh, yes, lunch with friends. Well, I guess I've said all there is to be said about that. Well, then, why don't you just sit back and relax? Uh, you're not a uh, very relaxing person. Uh, these uh, earrings, are they family heirlooms? Oh, no, no, I, I mean, yes, yes, they are, they, uh belong to my mother. Oh, Scott, please, they'll come off. Your mother's, huh? Hmm, my, well, well. She's, um, she's south. She'll be coming home day after tomorrow. Oh, it's warm in here, isn't it? Yeah, is it? Well, <laughs> with, uh, with all this uh, interesting talk of chef salad and consomme, I'm beginning to get hungry. Where would you like to eat? Oh, any place, any place at all. Any place but here. Yes. Well, then, suppose we just get up and go. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes, yes. And after dinner, I dropped Major Landis off in front of his apartment house and drove straight home. 
Mother, now, please, dear, you've just come home. Must we start an argument? Are you completely out of your mind, Jessica? The whole town is talking. Oh, just a few gossipy old ladies led by your good friend, Mrs. Thompson. You don't deny she saw you entering a strange man's apartment. This is ridiculous. It's the principle of a thing. The world allows considerable liberty to wives. It has never allowed to widows. If you won't think of yourself, at least remember your duty to Paul. Keep Paul's name out of this. I've had enough, Mother. Jessica. You talk about duty. It's your duty to go to those women and tell them to shut up. You talk so much about wanting to help me, but what you really want is to drive me back into your ivory tower. Well, I won't allow you to, ever. Where are you going? To see Major Landis, to really give those old biddies something to gossip about. <laughs> Well, come in. They told me at the desk you didn't wish to be disturbed, but I came up anyhow. I'm delighted you did. I just happened to be passing by, so I... Oh, I am disturbing you. No, not at all. What's this? Just a martini. Expecting somebody? No, no, just took a little time off to have one. Do you mind? Help yourself. You know, it's amazing how one can acquire a taste for martinis, like for anchovies. Yes, yes, I guess it is. <laughs> well, here we are, aren't we? Yes, yes. Now, suppose you tell me what this is all about. Oh, you probably know anyway. You know almost everything. The chicken's beginning to hatch, maybe, huh? Uh-huh. Well, good. Oh, I know I'm acting like a fool. I, I hope you'll forgive me. Go home, Jessica. Go home right now. Yes, Scott. As a matter of fact, I only stopped by to invite you over for Christmas Eve. Oh, sure, sure. I mean it. I mean it. I, I want you to meet my kids. They'll be home from school Friday. I'd like to meet them. You will come? Sure. Reindeer and all. Oh, good. Well, goodbye, Scott. Uh, that's the closet door, Jessica. Oh. Oh, oh yes. Yes, and that other one is the one. Yes, that... yes, I, I see. I see. Well, uh, goodbye, and don't forget now, Christmas Eve. I won't. <laughs> and for heaven's sake, stop grinning. In here, you kids. Here in the kitchen. What's the big secret, Anna? You boys got a visitor, that's what. Here they are, Mrs. Kimball. Merry Christmas, boys. Grandma. Oh, hello, Graham. Oh, gosh. Merry Christmas, Grandma. Why'd you come in the back way? What are you doing here in the kitchen? I have no intention of going inside, Kim. Here, here are some presents for you. Oh, oh gee. Thanks, You can exchange Grandma. them if you want to. I see so little of you. I... No, no longer just what you like. Oh, we'll like them, Grandma. Hey, now, why don't you come inside? Yeah, Jenna and Carrie are here, and Frank and some new friend of Mom's, uh, Major Landis. Major Landis? Oh, not really. What do you mean, Graham? Never mind. Well, well, since it is Christmas Eve, but just for a minute, mind you. <laughs> hey, look, everybody. Look who's here. Mother, Merry Christmas. Don't let me disturb your pleasure. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Mother, this is Major Landa, Scott, my mother. How do you do? I've heard a great deal about you, Major. Uh, isn't it time for the present? Well, I'll say it is. Now, remember, kids, just one each till tomorrow. Shall we step into the hall, Major? I understand you met my little girl in California. Just where are you stationed? Chicago. Temporarily, of course. Isn't that rather a coincidence? First in California, and now Chicago. Oh, entirely a coincidence. And where, may I ask, did you meet Jessica? I can't divulge that information. Why? What do you mean? Secret business. Are you joking with me? No, no, no. Here's Jessica. She could tell you if she wishes. Jessica, are you keeping something from me? Oh, Mother, let's not start with that. Not on Christmas Eve. Come, I have a gift for <laughs> That's you. That's my fault, Jessica. Madam, suppose we start all over again from the beginning. No, we shall not. I can see that you're a thoroughgoing scoundrel, young man. I'm delighted to hear you say so, madam. Kindly stop calling me oh, madam. Mother, please. Now, Jessica, I know what I'm doing if you don't. Young man? Please, not young man. I think you're in league with the devil. Good night, Jessica. Mother. Well, there went the spirit of Christmas. Well, I... <laughs> Shall we try to go on with the party? Well, we could uh, sing jingle bells again. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the... Well, what's the matter? Come on, it's Christmas Eve. Off to bed now, boy. Sleep well. On Christmas Eve? It's sure nice to be home again, Mom. It's sure nice to have you home. Merry Christmas, darling. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, Mom. Oh, what is... Is Major Landis staying? I just wanted to talk to him for a minute. Oh, well, Merry Christmas, Major Landis. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, boys, and thanks. 
Well, Scott, now you've seen me as I really am. Home, children, mother. Of course, mother was more than I'd bargained for. Oh, I'm glad I met her. What a wonderful museum piece. Do you like my boys? <laughs> oh, of course I like them. It was nice to have you here tonight. Uh, you didn't invite me here on purpose, by any chance. Well, now that you mentioned it, perhaps I did. Jessica, I've got to talk to you. Yes? We simply cannot go on like this. You want to stop seeing me? Of course not. But I know myself, and I'm beginning to understand you. I'll only make you unhappy, Jessica. It's inevitable. Go on. Well, seeing you here tonight in this house that you once shared with your husband... Don't talk about that Don't now, you please. see that I've got to talk about it? You expect a love affair to lead to marriage and... Are you trying to tell me you're not the marrying kind? Well, I've never felt that it was right for me. Oh, Dutch courage. Frank Everett's the type of man for you. I don't love Frank. Well, there are others, and as long as I'm hanging around, you won't find them. Suppose you let me figure it out for myself. But don't you see? There's no future in this for you. I'll cross my bridges when I come to them. Women. Well, I, I guess I'd better be going. <laughs> don't take it so big, Scott. I know what I'm doing. I wonder. Merry Christmas, Jessica. Merry Christmas, Scott. He... He... He kissed her. He kissed Mom. Well, well, well that's on a cut on a mistletoe, probably. They're supposed to do that. But she didn't kiss Frank or, or Carrie. Gosh, Come I... on to bed, Kim. Mom shouldn't have kissed him, Keith. She shouldn't have. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. In a moment, we'll bring you Act Three of My Reputation, starring Barbara Stanwyck and George Brent. Hollywood's search for new talent never ends. Our guest tonight is the newest addition to Paramount's roster of lovely starlets, Miss June Harris. How did Paramount find you, June? I sat next to a talent scout at a radio quiz show. He asked me to make a test. And signed you to a long-term contract, I understand. Mm -hmm. Have you met any famous stars yet? Yes, when Paramount was making Blaze of Noon. I met Ann Baxter on the set. Well, Ann's screen technique is well worth watching if you aspire to the Laurel she's already won. I also met William Holden, William Bendix, and Sonny Tuff. They're all in Blaze of Noon, and they make a wonderful trio of air airmail flyers. In the early 20s, when pioneer pilots gambled their lives and their planes against the hazards of night flying and rough weather. While some of the flying scenes were being shot, Ann Baxter and I talked about clothes. And Mr. Kennedy won't be surprised to hear that we soon got around to luck. I'd be more surprised if you didn't. In the picture, you see, most of Anne's costumes are suits with simple white blouses or plain dresses with white collars and cuffs. And she told me how fast they get soiled on the set. And then you discovered that, that every night the wardrobe people took them away, luxed them, and the next day they were just as fresh as could be. Yes, that's right. And then when I admired the blouse Anne was wearing, she confessed it wasn't new at all. I couldn't believe it until she explained it had always had Lux Care. Well, that new look is natural when colors get Lux Care, Miss Harris, because we know from actual tests that Lux Care keeps colors lovely up to three times as long. Wrong washing methods soon fade colors. Well, Lux and I have been good friends since my dramatic school days when I just had to make things last. Lux Care is thrifty care for anything safe in water alone. Thank you for coming tonight, June Harris. Back now to your producer, William Keeley. Act three of My Reputation, starring Barbara Stanwyck as Jessica and George Brandt as Scott. It's just one week later, New Year's Eve. At the Drummond House, Jessica is waiting for Scott Landis to call for her. While a few blocks away, at the home of one of their friends, Keith and Kim are attending a holiday celebration. <laughs> What's the matter with you anyway, Kim Drummond? A few minutes ago you said you were having a swell time. Yeah, well, thanks very much. 
Hey, Keith, let's go home. But why? Mom said we could stay until 12 o'clock. You should hear the way everybody is talking about Mom. I mean, the grown-ups inside there. Well, I don't get it. Well, it's true what they're saying, isn't it? Kim, what were they saying? I'll tell you on the way home. Well, after all, your mother always came here for New Year's, and all of a sudden she doesn't. No wonder people are talking. Well, if that's the way you feel about it, I'm glad we're going home. Yeah. Let's go, Kim. Boys, aren't you home awfully early? Mama, are you going to the Van Ormans' party? No, dear, I'm going to Chicago. Well, everybody expected you at the Van Orman. <laughs> well, I didn't know I was so popular. Mom, did you go to the fights with Major Landis? Oh, well, yes. Boys, if you have anything on your mind, I wish you'd tell me. They made a lot of jokes about it at the party tonight. And all that stuff about Lake Tahoe and Major Landis. Have they been telling you these things? No, I just heard them talking. I didn't believe it. Mom, none of it's true, is it? Not their interpretation of it. We... We kind of hoped you'd say they were all lying. Listen to me. I've done nothing whatever you need be ashamed of. Will one of you go to the door, please? I'll get it. Mom, you ought to see it from our side. I don't want to talk about it, Keith. Excuse me, dear. I'd better go downstairs. Well, good evening, Kim. Good evening. May I come in? Sure. Is your mother... Oh, hello, Jessica. My, are you all dressed up. Hello, Scott. Uh, that tone. Something wrong? No, Nothing. I'm sorry I have to run off, boys, and I'm sorry about what happened. But there's nothing more I can say now. Kiss me goodnight. Good night, boys. Good night. Good night. Mom. Scott, do you mind if we stop by the Van Almonds? They're having a party. Well, if it won't take too long, they won't hold that reservation for the Georgian room after ten. I only want dropped in for a moment. Look who's just arrived, Jessica. Hello, everybody. Come on Hi, in, Jessica. There. So you came after all. Everyone, I want you to meet Major Landis, of whom you all have heard so much. Uh, I'm very happy to meet you. How are you? I won't attempt introduction, Scott, but they're all very old friends of mine. Let me take your rap, dear. Thanks, Riet, but we're not staying. I would like to speak to you alone for a minute. Alone? Well, well, here's the library. Excuse us, everyone. Riet. Keith and Kim left the party because they were extremely upset by some things they overheard here. Well, why pick on me? Because it happened in your home. I don't want to know who did the talking, but I'm asking you... I it... did the talking. I think you've been behaving abominably. Is being seen with a man such a dreadful crime? And what's this nonsense about Lake Tahoe? Oh, come now, Jeff. No wonder the boys distrust me. What right have you, Ria? The right of an old friend who hates to see you make a fool of yourself. A friend should come to me first and not allow vicious gossip to circulate. We thought you missed Paul dreadfully. It's obvious you forget pretty quickly. I don't forget. You just resent me for being able to make a new life. Then you admit you're guilty. Oh, that's all you got out of what I've been saying. Look, I'm giving a party in there. Come on. I promise I won't embarrass you in front of your handsome friends. I'm afraid I don't care anymore. Then why did you bother to come here at all? Because I was still coward enough to want to save my reputation. Why, Jess, how quaint. But I'm not a coward anymore. No matter how hard it is to strike out on my own, I'm going to do what I think is right for me. Even if it means breaking completely with everything in the past. And that includes you, Riet, and all those so-called friends of mine. Well, I'm ready, Scott. If you'd rather stay... No, I want to celebrate, but not here. It's wonderful to really get something off your chest. All of you good people must try it sometime. Happy New Year, Scott. Happy New Year, Jessica. I'm so glad we came here. This place has a special sentimental value for me. Do you know why? I think I can guess. Suppose I hadn't been here that night. Jessica. And don't ask me if it was pure coincidence that's brought us together again, because I, uh, well, I might tell you the truth. Jess, if you don't mind, suppose we order supper now. Well, isn't it early? Well, I, I don't think we should stay too late. You know what it's like driving a New Year's Eve. I have an idea. I have one bottle of good champagne in the ice chest, and we could have it when we get home. Yes. I'd like to have a last glass with you. <laughs> God, you're so serious. Oh, I, I only meant the last class on New Year's. Now, how about a dance, Jessica? Kim, Kim, you 
you still awake? Uh-huh. Did you hear a noise downstairs before? Front door. I guess Mom's home. As soon as she comes upstairs, let you have a happy new year. She liked that. Yeah, but I, I guess he's down there with her, the Major Landis. Yeah. Well, she'll, she'll probably be coming upstairs in a couple of minutes. Well, raise your glass, Scott. Here's luck to us. Luck? Oh, this is by far the best. I wish now we'd stayed here by ourselves. You know, I've been thinking... So have I, Jessica. And there's something... I suppose it's foolish of me to plan for the future, but I just can't seem to get out of the habit. Plan? Oh, all the things we can do. It's so lovely here in the spring. We can swim in the pool and have picnic supper. Listen, Jessica. I've got to give it to you straight. This is our last evening together. I've got my orders today to go to New York. New York? I leave at 7 o'clock this morning. Scott. That's why I brought you home so early. Oh, I suppose I should have told you. Well, this is it, then. Yes. I imagine all the shipped right out. I'm going to New York, too. Jessica, listen. Oh, darling, I knew I'd lose you someday, but now that the time has come, I can't let you go. I can't. You don't think I want to go, do you? I don't know anything except I love you. I was afraid to admit it even to myself. I thought that when you did go away, I could pick up my old life again and forget... That's exactly what you have to do, Jesse. You'd be better off if you'd never known. Oh, no, no. Don't ever say that. Don't even think it. All I want to hear is that you want me in New York as much as I want to be there. I want you more than anything in the world. Oh, then nothing else matters. Darling, I'll have to hurry and pack, and so must you. Take my car. Leave it at your apartment. I'll take a cab and meet you at the train at 7 o'clock. A little before 7, darling, if you can I won't say goodbye, then. Not yet. No, no, not yet. LaSalle Street Station, 7 o'clock. Mom. Keith. And Kim. Mom, are you going away? We heard what you said. Yes, dear, I'm going to New York. But why? Major Landis is going overseas, Kim. I want to see as much of him as possible before he does. You'll be leaving for school tomorrow, and... Well, Anna will see you off. Oh, try to understand, please. Mom! Uh, Excuse me now, please. I have so many things to do. I'll get it, Anna. It's probably Major Landis. Oh, where is that hat box? Hello? Mother? What? At your house? Oh, yes. Yes, I'll come over right away. Where are they, Mother? Where are the boys? In the drawing room. Jessica, just a moment. I haven't asked them why they came here, but something must be very wrong at home for them to have to come to me for help. All I beg you is that you think carefully what you say to them. Otherwise, you may regret this bitterly the rest of your life. Now go to your boys, my dear. Keith. Kim. Mother. I, I... I don't know what to say or how to begin. But what good does it do to run away? We don't want to live at home anymore. Oh, Keith, what an awful thing to say. He lied to us. We don't know what to believe. Oh, I told you the truth, Kim. Always. You're going to New York with them. It proves they were right. Oh, Mom, don't you remember Dad at all? Oh, don't say that, please. You, you know I remember Dad. Nobody remembers Dad but us. Can't you understand that I might learn to care for someone else and still have a place in my heart for Dad? But you, you belong to Dad. Doesn't make any difference whether he's dead or not. Kim, Keith, will you try for a few minutes to think of me as someone else than your mother? How can we? You are. Well, then just sit down and listen. I, I don't know whether or not I can make you understand. You don't know how terribly ill Dad was for almost two years. He he didn't want you to see him suffer. I knew how he felt, so I kept things away from you. After he died, I... I tried in every way I could to forget his illness. You see, I... I wanted to be able to remember the good times when we were all together, but... I was so terribly lonely. All I could think of was Dad toward the last. Remember that time we planned the picnic just before you went away to school? You went over to Gretchen's instead. I had to bite my lips to keep you from asking you not to leave me. 
And then when you were away at school, I... I got so I dreaded staying home. If I hadn't gone away and met Major Landis, I... I, I don't know what would have happened to me. Mom, does... Does he mean as much to you as Dad used to? Oh, don't say used to, dear. Dad still means just as much to me, only in a different way. Maybe when you're older, you'll know that you can give all your heart to more than one person and still remain sincere and loyal. The first time you fall in love, it's, it's also wonderful and exciting. It can be like that only once. But second love can be just as true and just as deep. I... I lost Dad, boys. And now I'm losing Scott. I may never see him again. It's... It's very hard to lose someone you love. Mom. Mom. Don't cry, please. Oh, Mom, I want you to be happy, and I try to understand, but... Golly, it's so hard. Can... Can we go home now, oh, Mom? Oh, Kim. Kim. I'll say goodnight to Grandma for you. Mother. Yes? We're going home, Mother. I knew you'd do the right thing, Jessica. Thank you for helping me. It's hard to recognize what is right sometimes. I know. Funny. I never thought you could do anything else. I haven't always been old, Jessica. Young people resent conventions. But as you grow older, you realize conventions were established because there was a need for them. Now go home and get some rest, my dear. Jessica, over here, darling. God! Say, you had me scared. I didn't think you were going to make it. Oh, darling... Darling, I, I can't go to New York with you. I can't leave my boys. They ran away because they just couldn't understand about us. Ran away? Oh, I got them back. I, I, I tried to explain, but they're just too young. If I go now, things will never be the same between them and me. Oh, Scott, please. Please try to realize why I'm letting you down. Please forgive me. There's nothing to forgive, darling. You have to face responsibility. You wouldn't be you if you didn't. I'll always love you. Nothing will ever change that. Boy! Oh, boy! Oh, Scott, this is it. We have to say goodbye. Not even time enough to say what I'd like. You know how I felt about being tied down to anything. Well, I've changed. I'm coming back, darling. I, I know I'm coming back. Can you wait for me? Jessica. Oh. Tell me, darling. Yes or no? Oh, of course I'll wait. No matter how long. I'll wait. Goodbye then, darling. And you won't be too lonely. No, Scott, no. I'll never be lonely again. Our stars will return in a moment for their curtain call. Tell me, Sally, what were you and the other girls so excited about before the show? Oh, the girls were looking at some lingerie I just bought. Oh, for a trousseau? Yes, but not mine. I've been shopping for a friend. I found a lovely buttercup yellow satin slip for her and a cornflower blue nighty that's a honey. You sound as if you like shopping. I do, especially now when the stores have such pretty things again. It's been a long time since we could find such yummy colors in lingerie. Turquoise, buttercup yellow, sea green and rosy pinks. And at last, there are lots of lovely laces again. Of course, if it weren't for Lux, a girl just couldn't afford to have such nice things. That's right, Sally. Lux Care is so gentle, it keeps colors lovely much longer. In fact, three times as long. Actual tests prove that slips and nighties washed the wrong way look faded and drab far too soon. Lovely-looking undies do make a girl feel luxurious. And you know, Sally, that with Lux Care, you can have three times as many without spending a cent more. How do you figure that out, Mr. Kennedy? Well, with Lux Care, under things stay colorful three times as long. So instead of replacing faded worn-out undies so often, you can buy extra ones, have three times as many. That's a swell idea. And it really works. That's why so many millions of girls always use Lux for under things. It's thrifty. Now, here's Mr. Keeley at the microphone. 
I'd be willing to stake the reputation of this theater on tonight's performance. So let's bring Barbara Stanwyck and George Brandt back to the footlights for a curtain call. I'm sure I speak for our 30 million listeners when I say, welcome home. Thank you, Bill. It's wonderful to be home, even though Bob and I wouldn't take a million for the memories of our trip. Did you and Bob meet the king and queen of England, Barbara? <laughs> no, they were on tour of Africa. I guess they got out when they heard we were coming. <laughs> but the Londoners were wonderful to us. So I gathered from the news reports. Were you mobbed in France as much as you were in England? No. You see, American players haven't been seen on the screen there in a long time. A few people knew Bing Crosby and a funny dark man he made some pictures with named Hope. <laughs> <laughs> Bing will love that. Now, how about yourself? Well, you, you were recognized, surely. Well, an American sailor stopped us in Paris and said, aren't you Robert Taylor and aren't you Barbara Stanwyck? And we said we were. And then he yelled across the street to his buddy, hey, Stan, Americans, Americans. <laughs> Did you buy any clothes in Paris, Barbara? No. We saw only Patu's showing. His collection was lovely, but uh, 150,000 francs, $1,400. Oh, no, that's just too much. <laughs> well, you know George is off on a cruise before long, Barbara, and as captain of his own ship. Is that right, George? Yes, I've entered my schooner of the South Wind in the Honolulu race July the 4th, and then I'm going on down to Tahiti and the South Seas. With all our wishes for a happy sailing, George. Thanks, Bill. And uh, what are your plans for the future, or more specifically, for next week? Uh, next Monday night, in an altogether different vein, we bring our audience a thrilling saga of the early West. It's 20th Century Fox's recent hit, My Darling Clementine. And our stars are Henry Fonda and Kathy Downs, in their original screen roles. Also, that exciting new star, Richard Conte. Based on the life of Wyatt Earp, my Darling Clementine is action-packed, romantic, colorful. One of the greatest westerns yet to reach the screen. Oh, I'm sure your audience won't want to miss that, Bill. Congratulations and good night. Good night. Good night, Bill. and thanks for my reputation. <laughs> Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Henry Fonda, Richard Conte, and Kathy Downs in My Darling Clementine. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. Have you heard? Meat dealers are paying the highest prices for used fat since fat salvage started. Every time you throw used fat away, you're pouring real money down the drain. America needs that fat to make soap as well as scores of other post-war products for you. The world's supply of fats is still seriously short. So start saving right now all the used fat you can while dealers are paying such high prices. It puts money in your pocket. Barbara Stanwyck is currently appearing in Warner Brothers' production of The Two Mrs. Carrolls. George Brent will soon be seen in the Universal International picture, Slave Girl. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This program is rebroadcast to our service men and women overseas through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service. Next week, part of the country goes on daylight saving time. If your area remains on standard time, tune in to the Lux Radio Theater one hour earlier. This is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to join us again next Monday night to hear My Darling Clementine with Henry Fonda, Richard Conte, and Kathy Downs. Spry. When you bake and fry. Spry. For your cake and pie. Spry. Get your shortening by. Rely on Spry. For lighter, better tasting cakes, try Spry, the pure, bland, all vegetable shortening with the magic cake making secret. Hear them say, boy, what a cook. Rely on Spry. F C R Y. Be sure to listen in next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of My Darling Clementine with Henry Fonda, Richard Conte, and Kathy Downs. And why not tune in to Joan Davis every Monday night over most of these stations? This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.